The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. Niche Advice Limited is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Hi, I'm here from Niche Advice, hope you're well. Today we're gonna to talk about buy-to-let mortgages. Low deposit, high deposit, medium deposit. What does it all mean? We'll actually look at the proper figures. I've got some live cases here that we can look at. Uh, we'll look at a deposit, 15% uh, deposit buy to let mortgage versus a 20% deposit buy to let mortgage and a 25% buy to let mortgage. And we'll look at the rental yields you need to get, um, how that loan to value affects criteria, and how whether it makes sense really to go with a low de deposit buy to let mortgage. Uh, in this scenario, actually, we're going to talk about um, uh, an individual, so buying in your in your own names rather than a limited company. I do have articles uh, on on uh, limited company products uh, on the website, as well as the benefits uh, videos on whether you should buy it with a limited company or, or look at buying in your personal names. But in this scenario, let's go and have a look at um, let's go and have a look at um, this uh, blog that I've done. It's on our website www.nicheadvice.co.uk, and what you will see is. Uh, uh, I'll put a link on the on the video and in, in the description below but here's the article are low deposit buy to let mortgages worth it basically let's compare an 85% 80% and 75% loan to value product um, so uh, in this scenario we've said I've based the uh, example on a 300,000 pound purchase by a higher rate taxpayer. Now it does make a difference in regards to how lenders work out the rental calculation, whether you're a higher rate taxpayer or a lower rate taxpayer. Obviously the first thing you should do if you're thinking about investing in property is speaking to a qualified tax advisor because that qualified tax advisor will know your earning history and certainly you can have a discussion with them about what you want to do going forward because um, because of the recent tax changes uh, a few years ago um, there are options where you can buy in your individual name or there are options where you can buy within a limited company structure uh, before you start talking to someone like me or other mortgage brokers i think you need to be clear on what your strategy is going forward if it's for example going to be um, you know, I want to just buy one buy to let maybe to have as an investment longer term, then obviously th th there's a different strategy. If you're saying, look, I'm going to buy a couple or I'm going to buy a, a one property every year and I'm going to have a portfolio and I'm going to have 10, 15 properties into it, then obviously you need a different type of strategy. So each landlord is different. They've got different earnings. They've got different income potentials and they're buying in a different area. You know, it's very different being a landlord in London and buying properties in central London because you're buying properties for different reasons in central London historically it was for capital growth rather than rental yields and um, where you would go in the Midlands and, and, and up north it's really around rental uh, growth rather than capital uh, increases uh, appreciation so um, the strategy needs to be clear from the start speak to your accountant you know your strategy what are you going to do with this property how long are you going to keep, keep hold of it is it to keep hold of it and then refinance it later on or is it just to keep it as what it is because all of that will have an impact on your next decision which is how much deposit you put down and what type of products we can go for so in this scenario we've gone in personal names and we've had to go for a five-year fixed because of the rental calculation um, essentially um, uh, what's happened in the last few years is the the two-year fixed so the two and three year products are, are calculated in a different way to a five-year fixed often with many lenders so um, the way it will work is uh, if you go for a two years they generally work it out on 145 percent at five and a half percent yield so it doesn't matter what the rate is they're going to work it on five and a half percent okay which means if you've got if you're buying certainly in the south or around london uh, what you will find is you've got to put a greater amount of deposit in uh, to make that work so although the lender has a 75 percent product or an 80 percent product what you will find is the way they work the rental calculation and we will look at that it means that you need a lot more um you need a lot more uh, rent to come in so in this scenario here um We've got, uh, you've got the loan to values, you've got the mortgage amount, you've got the lender, um, and the lender, you've got the rate, as including the initial rate and the APRC, 
Um, you've got the main startup cost, so that's the lender fee. Now there may be other fees associated with it, maybe telegraphic transfer and stuff, but I've just put the main lending fee at the moment. Uh, and I've put the rental needed. So let's have a look at it. So if you've got 25% deposit to buy a property at 300,000 right now, uh, or as of the 6th of February, 2020, um, the mortgage will be 225,000, okay? The lending cost is 2,559, that's the lender's fee. And you need a rental yield of 810 pounds, okay, to make that work. Now generally, in all honesty, you'd probably be pulling in, I don't know, 200, 1,200 to 15, 1,600 maybe rent on something like this, on a 300 pounds, uh, 300,000 pounds. So there's a better margin there left for you, okay? So this is what you need with 25% deposit. Let's look at it if you need 20, 80% uh, loan to value. So the loan goes up to 240,000. The rate increases, notice the rate is almost increased by 1%. Okay, so it's gone to 409. The fees has gone up pretty much by a thousand pounds roughly and the rental yield has now gone up to 1,150 so you need 1,150 to get this deal so there's no point if the rental is hundred um, I don't know a thousand pounds a month you will not be able to achieve that so you've got to go with something like this so this gets me to the point of 15% deposit I get a lot of calls and if you go to uh, if you search Google um, and you go to a lot of the brokers sites out there, everyone's flashing and advertising 85% loan to value products. You know, we can get you a buy to let mortgage with 15%, but they don't tell you how the rental calculation works, where only a slight, you know, very, very few people can get an 85% product because you need to have a fantastic rental yield to make that work, okay? Uh, and the fees do cost up, so let's have a look at it. Loan amount is 255000 The rate goes up to 5.29. So nearly, you know, if you look at it, 307, 529. The fees go up to 4,125. And the rental yield needed is 1,630. There's not too many properties. And this is a standard buy to let. This is not HMO deals, okay, and in this scenario. Um, this is just a normal buy to let product, okay? There's not too many um, lenders out there, oh, sorry, there's not too many properties out there for 300,000 that will give you a 1630 a month. And bear in mind, that's the rental that you need, okay? So you've got, still got to pay your costs, you know, still running costs and stuff like that. So just to work that out, that's, that's what the lender would require you to be able to receive. Now, this has to be verified by the lender's surveyors. So the surveyors go in there and you may think it's gonna yield, I don't know, 1,500 pounds. The surveyor could go there and say, do you know what? I think it's worth 1,200 a month. Even if you're getting 1,500 a month, even if you're buying a property and they are paying the, the previous landlord 1,500, they would say, well, no, we think it's worth 1,200. They're paying over the market, okay? So guys, you've got to really uh, look into detail uh, around uh, when you're looking to get an investment property at the end of the day you're trying to make money okay you are investing into a property to make money okay so there's no point being stuck on a not so decent product now there are instances where 15 percent deposit does make work if you're a professional landlord and you have got a strategy of maybe loading some of the properties and taking the, as much equity out because you can you can you can bear with the rate of 5.29 because you're using your capital to maybe do development finance maybe buy HMO properties get high uh, higher um, returns so yes it makes sense in some cases where you can do better things with that money okay but for someone who's starting out um, who wants to buy their first buy to let pro property and they approach me and say can I have a buy to let mortgage with the lowest level of deposit? Um, I'm just going to point them to this article because, and, and I think you should share this with, with whoever you know who's looking to get into properties and say, look, these are the figures. These are the actual figures. I'm not a YouTuber. This is what I do for a living. Um, and, and I have these conversations all the time. And people are, are watching a lot of videos on YouTube 
uh, where you know gurus are telling them that they're going to become millionaires and and to load up on their uh, on their debt uh, and and refinance and be able to load up and you know it doesn't make sense for from my perspective you know you want to be able to have a, a building block to work on so you want to have I would go certainly 75% but you know there are 65% products out there 60% products with even better rates okay um, so I would go with what it what you can afford if you can't um, if you can't afford it uh, I would drop down the property value rather than get yourself mixed up in a product that's not specifically designed for yourselves okay some of these 80 percent uh, i have to be said you know some of these products the higher loan to value the 80 and 85 percent some lenders will not give to first-time landlords okay so they have got a specific need there is a need out there for these type of products but not necessarily and there are there are lenders that will give you an 80 percent product for first-time landlords okay but i would i would throw a uh, sign of caution to that I would look at a, a product that's going to help you build the first property and then move on maybe second third you might be able to load properties up if you're getting a good rental yield uh, out of this um, I hope you found this useful uh, it's just looking into products it, on our website I mean I've been doing articles for the last 10 odd years on mortgages and the different types of deals you know we've got a website that sort of gives you all the information there it talks you about our fees talks you about why you should use us some of the best deals it's got some tools and calculators here but mainly i've got a lot of information around different types of products out there you know buy to let products you know look 80 percent buy to let products expats holiday homes portfolios um hmos um limited company type products renting to family members so if this is something that you're interested in you're looking to get into buy to let or you're a professional landlord um do uh, give us a give us a call and, and visit our website. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you visiting our site. Thanks.